Turn up now. Recognize the gentleman from South Carolina for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you know, Republicans are going to be painted that we are anti-Title X, and nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, I'm a I'm a fan of uh, Title X. Um, there are about 4,000 service sites, I think, in the country that Title X funds. Only about 500 of them are Planned Parenthood. Um, the argument from the other side is that uh, if, if with this um, Title X funding after this rule that many low-income Americans will no longer have access uh, to the health resources available to them. Um, that's just wrong because there are only 500 Planned Parenthood sites, 4,000 Title X sites. Um, these are federally qualified health centers, which I'm a big fan of. In fact, I think we should have expanded the federally qualified health centers uh, before we allowed the uh, Affordable Care Act to pass. We should have looked at where the rubber meets the road, where low-income Americans have access to health services on a wide spectrum at the federally qualified health centers across this country. We should have expanded the federally qualified health centers across this country, not expanding Planned Parenthood per se, but places that are meeting the needs of, uh, of, the, of the, the poor folks in our country. But when the government confiscates the tax dollars from Americans. And I think the abortion issue in this country is probably about 50-50. That's just guessing off the, off the cuff here. But so 50% of the country doesn't want their tax dollars to go to pay for abortion services. And government takes that money and then uses it to pay um, for abortions. In fact, Planned Parenthood gets about 50 to $60 million in Title X funds. Now, not 100% of that goes to abortion. Um, in fact, I think it's very difficult to determine how much of that tax dollars go to abortion because the money's commingled at Planned Parenthood in some place. Some of that money pays for uh, regular health services that Planned Parenthood provides, but some of it pays commingled, money they get from private donors, money they get from tax dollars commingled, and they used to pay for all the services that Planned Parenthood provides. And so it's very difficult. Does DHS have any concerns about the financial oversight of uh, Title X Planned Parenthood sites and that commingling that I'm talking about? That is, that is the reason that one of the, that a part of this rule is that there is going to be physical and financial separation in the case where there is co-location because of the, uh, to make sure that there is no commingling of funds, to make sure that there isn't fungibility that is used, and to make sure that there isn't a benefit based on economy of scale, which again would be against the um, section 1008 of, of the statute. Right. Um, you agree with me that the, the federally qualified health centers Take Planned Parenthood out of it for just a second, but the other federally qualified health centers actually meet the needs of, uh, of folks around the country? There, there are a lot of federally qualified health centers that are part of our Title X network that we work with and that do provide great service. Right. Um, many have been calling this final rule a gag rule. And a statement released in March by Planned Parenthood referred to the final rule as the Trump-Pence administration's unethical, illegal, and harmful Title X gag rule. This could not be further from the truth. It's, it's not the banning of abortion or abortion referral in the private sector. It's n only governing programs that the federal government funds with tax dollars. And I mentioned earlier, Planned Parenthood chooses pro to prioritize their abortion services over the rest of the services they provide. The final rule is very clear. If Title X sites want to continue receiving federal dollars, they simply must comply with the provisions of the final rule, which are consistent with the original statute. Go back to the original statute. Um, it requires that none of the funds, quote, in section 1008 of Title X says that none of the funds appropriated under this program shall be used in programs where abortion is a method of family planning. That's in the statute. That's not my words. That's in the statute. And so the, the rule is clear. It says that Title X sites want to continue receiving federal dollars. They simply must comply with the provisions of the final rule, which are consistent with the original statute. Wouldn't you agree with that? If not, they will have to seek their own private funding to continue the, the services, wouldn't they? I'm not aware of what their financial situation is. Right. Also under the final rule, grantees are permitted, just no longer required, to provide non-directive pregnancy counseling, including non-directive counseling on abortion to their patients. 
Isn't that right? Under the rule? That is a, that is a standard, okay. yes. And can you go into further detail on how this is different from the original 1988 policy? In, in the 1988 regulation actually was more uh, restrictive in that it prohibited any counseling about abortion and it also prohibited referral for abortion. Um, again, the Supreme Court upheld that as consistent both from a statutory as well as a constitutional standpoint, that that, that, that particular one um, stood that test. However, we believe as we were looking at this rule, that we needed to make sure that health professionals were able to have conversations with their clients that they wanted to have. Gentlemen's time's expired. Thank you very much. I'm, you're back. Chair now recognizes.